Hello and welcome back to the Programming in Linux training series. In classes 109, 110, and 111, we looked at numeric, text, and date functions. These were tools that we could use to manipulate, transform, and evaluate specific pieces of data in single fields. We could manipulate numeric data, date data, and text data in a variety of ways. Where we previously studied functions that we would apply to a field, now we're going to look at functions that we can apply to an entire record. The first two are the full screen functions. Here we see a record displayed in partial screen, which is to say we have our Ninox navigation panel on the left, and then we have the right hand part of our screen displaying the record. We can use these grab bars here to size these different components, but the full screen display option allows us to see the record in the largest possible view where the navigation panel has been completely hidden. We can open a record in full screen and subsequently close the full screen view and return to the partial screen view. The open full screen function is open full screen with a capital F and the parameter of the record you wish to open in full screen. In this case, I am opening the current record and you can always refer to the current record with the keyword this. This is a special word in the Ninox language we can see that as it is a different shade of blue. It's represented in all lowercase, and it will always point to the record that is currently visible on screen. In this case, the Apple Extended Keyboard record. This code snippet will take this record, open a new window on top of the current window, and display this record in full screen. It is important to note that when you open a record in full screen, you're not closing this screen. You're opening a new screen on top. When you close the full screen, you return to the view that was open on the bottom. Close full screen works just like open full screen, but does not require a parameter. Close full screen with a capital F will always close the current full screen on view, and no parameter is necessary. The next function is the ability to print a record. Here we have the ability in our Ninox print engine to create static and dynamic print forms, and we can name those print forms by naming these tabs. And I have renamed this particular report print form all uppercase with a space between the two words. I could have named it anything I want. The print record function allows us to indicate which record we want to print and which format or output design we wish to use. So in this case, we are using the keyword or function print record, capital R, takes two parameters, the record that is to be printed and the second parameter in double quotes is the name of the output form itself. Remember, I named this print form all uppercase with a space between the two words. The output form you refer to in the print record function must be referred to exactly as it is named. When you initiate the print record function, you can then save it as a PDF on your computer. The next function is the duplicate function. I will use this function to create a mirror image of the record specified as the sole parameter. Again, in this case, we're going to duplicate the current record this record. Now this particular block of code stipulates that 
the ID of the duplicate of this current record shall be stored in the variable I. Then I'm going to create another variable called this SKU and select the product SKU of the current record. That's this field right here. I am then going to go to my duplicate record, which is the I record. Here's the I record. And I'm going to go to the product SKU field of the newly created duplicate record. And I want this field to contain the value duplicate and a space, and then the SKU of the current record. And when I'm done, I'm going to use my pop-up record function to display my newly duplicated record, the I record, here on screen. I could also use the open full screen function to display the new I record in a full screen. And there we have it. Here's our new record, and you can see it's hiding behind the old record, the original, but it has a modified SKU that includes the word duplicate, which I was able to create using the code that was attached to this original record. And finally, we have the delete function. The delete function, like the other record functions, takes a single parameter. But unlike the other record functions, the parameter is not enclosed in parentheses. It's the keyword delete, followed by a reference to the record you wish to have deleted. In this case, this record. I wanted to delete the first record in the product table, I could do that. Or I could delete every record in a single table by simply doing that. And of course, I could filter this select statement to maybe only delete products that have not been sold in the last five years. So the delete function is both a record function and a table function, but it's a powerful tool that you can use to give users the ability to delete records from an Inox table and control that ability by giving them the authority. When setting up a user's profile, I could give them a tag that says whether or not they are or are not allowed to delete. I then could hide the delete button by only displaying the button when their security profile says, yes, this user has the authority to delete records. In our next class, we're going to look at user identification functions. These are very important if you're setting up your own password security system, or if you want to refer to specific users by name, by email, or by ID. I'll see you in the next class. Visit us at www.nioxys.com. Here, you can learn about different Ninox solutions. You can get tech support through our Ninox Help Desk, which is available seven days a week, or you can schedule private one-on-one -on -one concierge sessions for training, or we can help you build your application. And if you haven't done so already, sign up for our free Ninox Learning Lab. We do this every Thursday at 12 o'clock Eastern Standard Time, 5 p.m. in the UK, 6 p.m. Central European Time. These free hour-long sessions enable you to learn more about Ninox, features, functions, and solutions. We have open Q&A where you can get answers to all your Ninox questions, and you can meet other members of the global Ninox community. We look forward to seeing you there.